I'll tell you what, Michael. Have, have you seen the uh, new Han Solo movie trailer? I, you know what? I saw the Red Letter Media reaction to it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they did yeah. a nerd yeah, crew I saw reaction. Too. I saw it kind of by default yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, it looks awful. <laughs> I genuinely think it's gonna be a disaster. Star Wars and is so they've, bad. They've, they've announced like three more movies from the people who direct the uh, Game of Thrones. What they're doing? Star Wars there films. Has been an announcement that Disney has agreed to make some more Star Wars movies, I assume three more. I think one thing Star Wars could use is more incest. We haven't had that <laughs> yeah. in a while. I just want to say one more thing. Uh, Dil- Dylan's been inspired by our podcast and he's going to start doing his own podcast on a, on Coronation Street. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Surely surely he could get his mum as a, as a co-host. <laughs> yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> he, wow. he said he's taking notes on, on it. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I, I I'll give it a listen. <laughs> Back up, chump! You know Biggie Smalls rips it quick. The kicks it quick. You know how black niggas get. With the hoods for keys, with the boots with trees. All the people with the trees, they get crazy. Shots that niggas that open spots for the avenue Take my loot and I'm bagging <laughs> Pippin' holes that drive bobos and rodeos Flash the roll and make a wreck in they pantyhose Damn, a nigga style is a north of Doc's grip the clock Gonna walk down and try to block Just in case a nigga wanna act out I just black out, blow the motherfucking back out That's a real nigga for you Hello and welcome to 50... (laughs) Hello and welcome to Select and Reflect, the film review podcast where we look at films that have come out relatively recently at the cinema and see whether or not they still hold up upon a second viewing. Today we will be celebrating the release of Fifty Shades Freed by looking at its two predecessors, Fifty Shades of Grey and Fifty Shades Darker. I am your host, co-host, Michael, and as always, I'm joined by my host, co-host, Luke. Luke, why don't you tell us a little something about Fifty Shades of Grey and Fifty Shades Darker? Uh, well, we'll start off with Fifty Shades Grey, I think. Then we'll get on to Darker later in the podcast. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah. But yeah. So, Fifty Shades of Grey is a 2015 American erotic romantic drama film. Uh <laughs> Directed by Sam Taylor Johnson, starring Dakota Johnson and Jamie Dornan as uh, Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey. It was released February the 13th, 2015, uh, obviously one day before Valentine's Day. This is a story all about love. Uh, and do you hmm. want to guess what the uh, box office and the budget was? Uh, I'm going to guess relat- it's got to be a low budget. Because I mean, like, what what would they be spending money on? So I'm gonna guess the budget is all those helicopter rides. Forty million. You you are exactly correct. <laughs> I'm, 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 it's a good thing I messed up Utopia or else uh, Zootopia or else people. Anyway, uh, and the see, I actually think I remember hearing that the box office was either almost a billion or possibly over a billion for the sake of my faith in humanity i'm gonna guess 900 million you, you're way up here i don't know where you heard that but it's really it's way low yeah it's i mean okay. it's still a lot it's 571 million dollars okay that's i'm, I'm very so, happy <laughs> yeah like wow. it's nowhere near a billion but you know what? it yeah. might be it might be that i heard the collective box office for both of them yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, that yeah. could be. That's my only explanation yes. I can give. That is, that um, is more accurate. Yes. Uh, so the, the book actually. Do you know? Want to guess how many copies the book sold? Um, the thing is actually, I don't really know. Like, kind of, because I have an idea of like how much various films cost. I don't have an idea of how many books are typically sold for like a, a successful novel. So I'm gonna guess, and this could be completely off. I'm gonna guess twenty-five million. Yeah, it's not that much. Okay, then <laughs> I don't know how. I really have. Okay, is it is it less than ten million? Oh no, sorry, Michael. Oh, I, I got this completely innocently wrong. No, it is more than that. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, my uh, God, it is it's more than twenty five million. Jesus, I wow, I was reading forty million. Wrong. No, higher. 
50 million. Higher. 70 million. Higher. 80 million. I'll, I'll just say it. Uh, 125 million. That, that's everyone in the UK buying a, <laughs> buying one twice. That is insane. When did, I wow. read somewhere it was 4.1, I don't know what that was for. But... You know, we've clearly both been reading very, very faulty sources for our numbers. Yeah, so I, yeah, I just checked to make sure I was right because I had the number at 4.1 million, which I was like, that's quite a lot. But 125 yeah. million. <laughs> well, like, Jesus. see, I don't know how many people, like, read books and stuff. Although, actually, I know several people personally who have bought the book, so... Uh, I uh, guess Dylan's mum. <laughs> Dylan's mum, Dylan. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so maybe not too surprising. Yeah, I guess so. But wow. Yeah, there you go. So that's what we're dealing with here. I wonder. You wonder how that ranks, kind of relative to other books. Uh, well, I, I mean, I it must be it high. Just blows like... everything else out of the water. I think, I think I think Harry Potter probably beats it. I hope Harry Potter beats oh, it. Oh, as a combined total? I well, know. no. Was, I I would hope that one of the Harry Potters alone. Maybe that's not true though. Maybe it is the highest selling book of all time. Well, I, 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 I think it is because it says here it set a record in the United Kingdom as the fastest selling paperback of all time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That sounds so pretty. That should make it higher than Harry Potter. It's a it's a cultural phenomenon. Yes, and it is. We're here to document it. Why are all cultural phenomena so bad? Yeah, uh, like Avatar. Yeah. That's. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I I can't think of a good cultural phenomenon. Exactly. The sexual revolution was a mistake. Uh, okay. That was a bit uh, out of the field. So, okay. Talking about this, but you mentioned you have nitpicks. I said going into it that I didn't write down nitpicks because I think the whole film is just so terrible that it wouldn't even be worth. But yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not as in attacking you for your decision to no. get nitpicks. Well, so let's hear them. Yeah. I'm sure they're very. I mean, okay. This this movie obviously is based on fan fiction, uh, Twilight yeah. fan fiction. So obviously, <laughs> it's it's not going to be you know the greatest movie ever. Uh, just you, you, from that you can tell but obviously if we're looking at nitpicks there are uh, there are a few um, so the first one I got was uh, when Christian Grey finds uh, Anastasia uh, when she's drunk at a bar you know yeah. Anastasia calls her and somehow he realises that she's at the bar I don't know how he did that and in such quick time but there you go and um, he's a vampire, vampire. Yeah, obviously. You know what, actually, I have to ask, in the original, I guess you probably don't know the answer to this, but when this was originally Twilight fan fiction, I'm guessing Christian Grey was supposed to be a vampire. Oh, I don't know. Or, or like, obviously, um, and therefore maybe that is why he was able to, or maybe it's just stupid. Yeah, I'm not, who, yeah. who could know? It could be, well, they're both yeah. stupid. Like, yes. He's a vampire. Oh, that's smart. No. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and he uh, pushes um, Jose out the way. You know, Jose? Yeah. Out the uh, way, Jose. Yeah, get out the way, Jose. And uh, Jose, uh, who did a photo shoot with Christian Grey earlier that day, yeah. doesn't ask questions like, what the fuck? What, what are you doing here? Like, he just walks away. Well, you know what? It's because Jose is the ultimate complete beta male. <laughs> yes. Just the, he, he like, is, embarrassing. He is the, he is the cook. I mean, I heard he's not I... really a cook because he's not with Anna in the first place. So, are you yeah. aware that in the so? Uh, well, I heard this that in the original kind of it being based on Twilight, uh, Jose is based on Jacob. Now, I guess you know about Team Edward, Team Jacob. Oh, maybe you don't. Yeah, no, no, uh, I know. I'll tell okay. you why. I know a, a lot about Twilight actually, Michael, and yeah. more than you'd. More than you think. Uh, it's because in English um, lit in year nine, uh, we uh, well researched Twilight. I guess on the module was uh, Twilight. We were comparing uh, old-fashioned traditional um, vampire fiction to modern vampire fiction. I don't know why, 
but we were doing that, so I watched and read uh, the original Twilight book and movie, and uh, also saw the next one, which is New Moon, I think. Um, wow. And I don't know if we read New Moon, but yeah, basically I'm pretty well versed in Twilight. Because you know, I have seen the Twilight film, but something else I just remembered, and this is actually a bit interesting, and it gets more interesting, I think, when you think about what this 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 discussion could be about, because there, my original experience with Twilight was there was this uh, guy called Alex Day, and he had a YouTube channel, and it was back in like 2010 when. Uh, the highest subscribed YouTube channel had 4 million subscribers compared to now when the highest subscribed has like 60 million subscribers. But um, yeah. So it was a time when YouTube was a simpler, kind of better place and having a couple of thousand subscribers was a big deal. Um, and there was this guy and he had this, this show called Alex Reads Twilight. And it was a very good show uh, where he literally just read a chapter, chapter by chapter, and just kind of pointed out all the funny bits and all the, the stupid bits. What's interesting is that he was eventually disgraced due to a, uh, a number of sexual assault allegations. How ironic. I know, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, and he actually made a video talking about how he doesn't like Fifty Shades of Grey, and then I think like not very long after that, turned out maybe he was a bit too much of a, a Christian Grey. Well, we'll get onto that later. Mark. Yes. But uh, I just got a couple more nitpicks. Uh, so obviously uh, Anastasia's roommate, Kate, I think she's called, Ooh. gets with his brother. Now, when that happened initially, I was like, oh, this is going to be like some important thing. This is going to have a lot of relevance to the plot, as you would imagine. But like you, you see them like once after that. Which I guess, I'm not sure it's a nitpick necessarily. It's just like... You could have, that, that's, yeah. that's pretty important well, detail in this whole story. And it's just like, if you're one yeah, away... Yeah, like one of the things I wrote something. down, I wrote this about Christian Grey, which we'll get into discussing in more detail, but just while you're talking about that, I wrote down how his brother seems like a lot nicer and like better than him. Uh, I mean, just, just he seems like a more yeah. approachable, personable person. And uh, like, I mean, yeah, we can talk about how Christian Grey is a complete robot psychopath later but yeah i just thought uh the only thing that that yeah. kind of relationship with you know her roommate and his brother demonstrated to me is just like mm -hmm. how much better a relationship can probably be when you're dating someone who actually has like a personality <laughs> uh like i felt like i felt closer to well, christian yes. gray's brother who we see mm -hmm. for like two scenes than i did to christian gray <laughs> i thought like oh yeah he seems like he such seems a nice like such normal, normal guy. guy and then it's just yeah yeah Oh, yeah, and uh, one more, um, Anastasia. You know when they're doing that boardroom meeting, she asks Christian, uh, "What are butt plugs?" Now, considering that she's researched uh, all of BDSM and being a submissive, uh, I obviously the the moment is intended to bring humour as she asks that, and uh, Christian Grey's assistants walk in. Um, but obviously, yeah, it's a uh, kind of doesn't work when uh, yeah, yeah she, sh she should have been uh, researching it and already know what a uh, yes what I uh, was. well I just wanted to say on that because I, I've written about like I say I, I wrote down about the various characters and Anastasia I did point out how kind of innocent she is and I got down she she had to Google the word submissive and ask what dominant meant and i thought both of those were kind of you know i i guess well, that's not naivete that's just stupidity yes it's just her being stupid uh and i yeah like i say yeah. um one of the things i did actually want to bring up is there was one thing that when uh, they're doing the contract scene which we can talk about a bit later there's a bit that made me laugh it's the only bit in the two films that actually made me well it didn't make me laugh laugh would be too strong a word it made me think, haha, that's funny. Um, she just says, you know, where it says anal fisting, scratch it. And I thought, it's good because it's, you know, just so crass. And there's, there's something quite funny about kind of the, the film. It, it, it's almost trying to be like 
uh, take itself seriously, even though it's basically just about two randy people banging. And then I, I think that moment was the closest it got to not taking itself seriously. And I, I don't think a film like this should be taking itself seriously. Yeah. Uh, well, there so was, I did like that. <clears throat> there was two bits in the movie which did make me laugh uh, unintentionally. Uh, when okay. uh, when um, <laughs> Christian Grey says, fuck the paperwork, and tries to kiss, or does kiss Anastasia, just like, uh, that, that bit made me laugh. Because it's like the the least romantic line ever, and it's meant to be like this sort of yeah. <laughs> no, fuck the paperwork. I'm kissing you. Uh, and yeah. then um, when he when he uh, says this is Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, uh, I, uh, and that right there, obviously it's the name of the movie, but yeah. it's not meant like obviously it's a reference to his uh, ties being all different shades of grey. Uh, yeah. But he doesn't mention that phrase, like Fifty Shades of Grey, or anything like that, in the entire yeah. movie. And to just randomly come out and say that is just... I was... Yeah, yeah no, no one... I've never heard anyone use the phrase Fifty Shades of Anything, apart from in the context of this film. So, I, yeah, I uh, I think Anastasia definitely should have said, Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, that's just like that book, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Anastasia should have gone, wait, what? What, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I feel like I feel like a, that should have been said a lot during this film. It would have made would have made all the characters a lot more believable if they would have just said that phrase yeah. yes. more often. Yes. Uh, anything else before I get on to uh, absolutely ripping apart the opening scene? Uh, no, I have one thing that I'll say about the opening scene, but seeing as this is your... There are uh, just so many things wrong with this. Uh, and obviously, it's the first thing in the movie, it sets the tone for the rest of the movie, and it kind of it just starts it off in the worst possible way. Obviously, the opening scene, um, it, well, it's uh, the meeting of Anastasia and Christian Grey, and... I, it happens five minutes into the film, their meeting, uh, and this, these are the two main characters uh, that are in this, obviously, trilogy together. Uh, and I think it should be a significant sort of thing, because it's one of the only significant things that happens in the entire movie. Uh, but there's, there's yeah. no setup to it, really. Like, she gets in her car and drives to... Uh, Christian Grey's headquarters, yeah. and there's Grey Industries. Yeah. There's like, it, it, you should spend about ten minutes, maybe with Anastasia, before the scene, just you know getting her, uh, you know getting to know her a bit. And no, hold on. If we got if we got to know if we got to know her, then all the women watching the film would realise that she isn't just a empty shell for them to project themselves onto her. They'd get confused and they'd be like, hold on a minute. But I don't have a personality just like hers, so how can I fantasize that Christian Grey would fall in love with me? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Oh, yes, I agree. They, they should have they should have made a, a film about actual characters and actually given us a proper introduction to Anastasia. Yes. Uh, and so, uh, Anastasia uh, obviously is nervous, uh, as you would expect. Uh, she she trips and falls as she enters the office. Oh my goodness! I you know I can't believe I didn't. I'm surprised I didn't write that down because I I remember it now in my head and it was so stupid. Yeah, and yeah I didn't. Even... She doesn't like what is there to trip over? Like there's nothing to trip over. Like it just she, it's so yeah. so bad. It's so forced. Uh, yes. On, on on the subject of her being incompetent, I just wrote down she's a really bad reporter. <laughs> Like he, I would like to see her uh, on the subject of kind of sticking with her for a bit. I would like to see her do a a report where she does a good job. Because I guess maybe the point is supposed to be like, oh, Christian Grey, he's so kind of magnanimous that I think that's how you pronounce magnanimous. Uh, and he's so magnanimous that she can't even, you know, she's she's her mind's gone to mush because she's so in love with him. But that would be more believable if we'd actually seen her do a good job at reporting because. If I was watching that, I wouldn't think, oh, she's so in love with him that she can't even, you know, or he's so attractive she can't even 
maintain her her own cool around him. I, I just think, wow, she's a bad reporter. We've established she's nervous. That that is pretty clear. Uh, she's intimidated by him. Um, yet um, she talks back to him. Uh, he says, "I, you know, I I work hard a lot. Uh, I put in a lot of effort." And uh, then she says, "Maybe you're just lucky." Uh, and then uh, he says, "Well, you know, I like I, I control everything. It's not luck. I'm uh, I'm good. I'm good at doing that." And then so she then says to him, "So you're a control freak." And you've established uh, her, yeah, as this She's nervous, like, nervous yeah. wreck. Why would she be talking back to this billionaire? What is is she's a strong, independent woman, uh, just like the audience, and yeah. um, she, she's a strong, independent woman who is also weak yes. and incompetent. And yeah, somehow. well, it's <laughs> yeah, it's clear that yes. the uh, the writer do, don't uh, doesn't know what they're doing. Now, uh, what I read was yes. a lot of the source material, i.e., the book, was actually put into the film. Uh, on E.L. James, that's the author, uh, her insistence yeah. that not a lot was changed. So I'm willing to bet this was yes. dialogue actually in the actual book. Anastasia questioning Christian yes. Grey, even though she, like, it doesn't make sense at all. So, yeah, again, yeah, another reason yes. why this film shouldn't be taken uh, seriously. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, and then, then we have Christian Grey doing things which just don't make sense at all. Uh, this this billionaire yeah. who obviously knows a lot about public relations, as any billionaire would, um, says in an interview that he doesn't care really about feeding the poor. It's just good business. Now, you may say that privately, but why the hell would you say that to an interviewer? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Um. And, um, and then he also says that uh, when Anastasia says, some people say you have no heart, uh, or something to that effect, and Christian Grey says, well, yes, some people do say that, and those are the people closest to me, i.e. he's agreeing that he has no heart. Yeah. Again, why the hell would you say these things? I guess he's not a good business. <laughs> yeah. No, again, he, he, he's not. He's, he's a not. terrible business like, man. Surely controlling uh, your image is pretty important. Uh, if you are this uh, billionaire whose name is on the company and on your building, Grey uh, Tower, whatever it's called. And can you imagine yeah. a businessman who's completely obnoxious and says horrible, immoral things ever being ever being successful? And having his name on the... Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that, well, that's the thing. Like, th this guy is... He, he's going to be, like, smart and... Everything and the smartest, just, tremendously smart. Yeah, tremendously. He knows more smart. than anyone about <laughs> about ISIS. Just, yeah, I don't. It doesn't. By the way, we don't really know what he made his billions in. Yeah. Uh, telecommunications, I guess. But yeah, I, I don't like. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't get the sense that he uh, he really is a billionaire in this. Like he. Uh, He's lying about being a billionaire. Well, what I mean is. Uh, maybe we just don't see business side of him. Yeah, yeah he, I think it's. I can't. It, yeah. Yeah, it's mostly that just you know it doesn't really matter. I don't. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think the author cared, and I don't think anyone involved in the production cared. Yes. Um, all, all, all I'm saying is I can't understand why he's a billionaire. Yes, it doesn't make any why? sense. Um, yeah. It doesn't. He doesn't seem to have any sort of like. I. The the weird thing about it, I'm not sure if it's ever mentioned whether or not he kind of because obviously he was adopted, yeah. And I guess his family is really rich. His adoptee mm -hmm. family is really rich, um, and I assume he he's basically inherited it. I mean, he doesn't act like you know. Okay, so have you seen the film about? Oh, a boy? so he just inherited his yeah. adopted father's company. Yeah. Have you seen the film about a boy? Yes, I uh, have. We Hugh saw Grant, that in English. Yeah, Hugh Grant in that film, his kind of thing is that he's a complete neat, not in education, employment, or training, because he's living off the proceeds of a Christmas song, I think. Um, yes, that is correct. And like that's kind of that's what I imagine Christian Grey's character being like. He's someone who just has 
loads of money and doesn't know what to do with it, it doesn't make sense in a way for him to be a good businessman because no. he's yeah. not ri he's written like someone who just has loads of money and just feels like being reckless and impulsive with it, not someone well, who. Yeah. You know, I mean, it. Anastasia asked him, "To what do you owe your success?" So that implies that he's done something, like he's not just inherited well, he's it. He's got a small, small loan of a million dollars. Yeah, just a small loan of a million dollars. <laughs> but yeah, uh, well, like you said, this movie is not interested in in, <laughs> in uh, the, the actual substance of him being a billionaire. They just want you to know he is very rich and he can do stuff that other people can't yes. because he's got a lot of money he's so cash back money. To yeah back to anastasia okay. so anastasia is surprised to read that he uh christian gray is adopted and uh and like did she not read the uh, the notes beforehand you know because she she's got a 4.0 yeah. gpa she's smart like she's going to uh ask this a billionaire, a load of questions, you know. She, yeah. Uh, and she makes wants to make sure her friend, uh, or she's covering for her friend, so she doesn't want to screw up. Yeah. Because uh, then she screws her friend over, and she just doesn't bother to ask, or sorry, read any of the questions that she was going to ask. Yeah. Um, for this we, very important interview. Can we talk about how the the interview format is very clearly a, a lazy form of exposition? I was just thinking about it there when it's yeah. kind of like, that's the reason like so she can be like oh let me tell you uh, about about who you are Christian Grey um, <laughs> oh thank you uh, yeah I, I think you're right and yeah, yeah she should have I mean I didn't read the notes for this for okay. this podcast so uh, yeah uh, and then one more well actually two more things she asks him are you gay but then she's oh uh, like she's surprised about the question yes I like, she asks she's like are you gay oh sorry yeah, like I, uh, she she wasn't conscious of the fact that she made the choice to read the question and yes. ask it to him. It's it's I, I wrote about that because I wrote uh, that it was a bit kind of, I mean, subtly. I don't know if sat uh, subtly is the right word, but homophobic. Uh, that they're kind of like like as if it's the worst thing in the world to be asked <laughs> if you're gay. Like and it's yeah, like I, guess so. I mean I don't want to go John Oliver here, but it's. It's 2015. Was this film released in 2015 or 20? It was, yes. Yeah. It's 2015. It's 2015, people. Can we just be comfortable asking? I mean, like, it's kind of like on the one hand, it's stupid to even ask it as a question. But if you do ask it, then the correct response is not, oh no, I'm so sorry. I yeah. asked if you were one of the gays. The correct response yeah. is just, no, I'm not. Um, some people are, yeah. but not me. Yeah, well, yeah, that that is a good point. But I was just yeah making yes. the point. Yeah, she didn't. She didn't she's... even notice that she was reading yeah. it. She's on yeah. autopilot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then finally, um, so uh, Anastasia, um, well, Christian says uh, people know him well for some reason, uh, or, or the people that know me well know this about me. I can't remember exactly what he said. And Anastasia then replies to him, again, this intimidating billionaire, uh, why do I get the feeling that's not true? Like, nobody is close to him. Like, he doesn't have any friends. I think that was <laughs> Christian's talk about how he's got friends. And then she says, why do I get the feeling that's not true? Yeah. And that was such a wild accusation. Like, hmm, I don't think you actually have any friends. Yes. M miss, Mr. Intimidating Billionaire. And obviously she wouldn't ask that question again doesn't really make sense or, or make that accusation and uh, yeah yeah. It's, yeah and that caps off the opening scene you know, which is just an absolute yeah. car crash well you know what would have been a better opening scene is that interview I actually always forget his name you know the fake kind of channel 4 uh, news, re news anchor who kind of does a lot of interviews he is Asian I reckon uh, Christian Guru Murphy yes uh, have you ever seen his interview with uh, Quentin Tarantino? Yes. Where Quentin Tarantino's like, I'm shutting your butt down. You, I'm yeah. not your slave. You're not my... Ma that would have... What they should have done is they should have just <laughs> had the characters reenact that scene. Because it would have established... <laughs> I think it would have established yeah. some real chemistry. Yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just... just awful like I was watching it I was like right I need to do a whole section of this yes because um, it was just so 
much wrong in so little space. I, I feel like the entire film was that much wrong in that much space, but ultimately you just got so no, tired oh, of it that... that the only the only thing you could like that's kind of I I found that just the amount I wrote as the film went on just got less and less as I got so drained. Just yeah, by, well, yes. that bit right there is uh, I think the worst. I think it get better. It does get better from then on. Yes, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, but yeah, that I was yeah that was like an awful way to kick off your movie. Just mistake after mistake and yeah. Yes, yeah. it did not. Well, I was going to say it did not set set the tone well. It set the tone very accurately. No, it did of, set yes. the tone pretty well. Yes. Um, you knew I wanted, what you were in for. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about um, Christian Grey as a character. because. Right, well, can we talk about Anastasia first? I was considering talking about Anastasia first. I've got Anastasia written first, so we can talk about her if you like, yeah. Yeah, I think it's best to, yeah. to talk about Cause her. Because she's our main yeah. character. Yes, exactly. Right. Told, the book is told from her perspective, I believe. Okay, what have you got? What have I got? Well, okay, I can talk about her. Okay. Um, well, I just, I'll just say, uh, as a quick introduction on Anastasia, yeah, that she is uh, not believable at all. Uh, laughably shy and timid. Uh, absolutely no confidence in herself, as uh, demonstrated by the look at me. Uh, comments when uh, Christian Grey asks her if she wants to intern yeah. at, uh, at his company. Um, she, and yeah, she thinks so little she of herself. She hates herself. Almost. Yeah, she does. And men like she, that. She hates herself. Um, yes. 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 Low, low self-esteem. Easy. The, the thing about Anastasia is, so I wrote, a part of the, the, the way I've, I've dealt with the relationships, as I've explained to you, but I wrote Anastasia, Christian, and then their relationship. Now, the problem is, I don't have that much written about Anastasia, because pretty much everything I have written about Anastasia is under the relationship category. Because, of course, she is basically nothing without her relationship to Christian. Um, I, I did have a few things yeah. about her, though, that were distinct. Uh, it's ki that's kind of why I realised I wanted to start with Christian, because I was like, well, there's only so much I can say about Anastasia before I have to talk about Christian. But, and even then, the things I've got about her are a bit... Um, uh, heavily centred on her and other men um, like I guess one of the things I want to talk about is just how uh, attractive she's supposed to be in the context of this film because you've got okay. this guy called Jose um, who is like I say he's supposed to be based on Jacob and in the in the books Jacob is supposed to be kind of like a viable option for her like so it's like yes. oh maybe you want to date but in this it's like Jose has no chance um, and yeah. he, he invites her to this gallery. This is in the second film. I know I, I'm gonna. We can talk about the second film separately, but it, with regards to kind of the character, he invite. I think this is in yeah, the second yeah. film. Yeah, um, it is. Okay. Yeah, it's he invites her to this, this gallery, and it's just pictures of her face. And then in the second <laughs> film, she's got this boss who tries to date her. And then I think she when where she works. I think it's heavily implied. I'm, I'm kind of. I've suppressed a lot of my memories of this film, but I think where she works at the hardware store, it's implied that someone there, I think it's her boss, it might be her co-worker, is also attracted to her. Um, yeah. It seems as if like there's just everyone is attracted to yeah. her. So that, that I was just going to say, uh, despite the fact that um, Jose and all these men like her, she seems to have such low self-esteem. Did you say Jose like because she's... you're a Man United fan? So you just that's how you <laughs> that's how you pronounce Jose yeah. now. Yeah, Jose. Now, um, so when Christian Grey asks her, "Have you ever been with a man, or have have men ever come on to you?" She says, "Never one I wanted." Yeah, it's uh, which so is dumb. like, well, why do you have such a low self-esteem? Yeah, if, like all the men have tried to get with you and, and uh, yeah. lucky for her of course she manages to find an eligible billionaire bachelor uh, bachelor bachelor ba um, yeah. for her yeah so how how convenient yes for Anastasia but yeah go uh, on she, she held out on a while and the other thing I wanted to talk about is that um, she's and I the thing is again it, it's so hard for me to talk about her at all outside of the context of her relationship and stuff but one of the things I did want to talk about is that She's kind of annoying um, in the... <laughs> well, first of all, she she has a whingy, annoying, concerned voice a lot of the time. But the other thing is, they've written her in such a way 
that she's questioning a lot of Christian's actions, but constantly going along with it. And when you're watching a character just go, I don't like this, and they're not doing anything proactive about it, you're just watching a character who is incredibly annoying, basically. Well, do you, do you think she's a believable character? <laughs> like, do you think someone like her actually exists? Uh, because I, I, I don't think anybody like that could no. actually exist. I, I mean, it's yeah. yes, it is kind of... Yeah, I mean, you, you don't even... I mean, obviously, like I say, she is the same as uh, the same as Bella from Twilight. She is a empty shell that the audience, female audience, is supposed to project themselves onto. Yeah, but at least at least Bella wanted to be with yeah. Edward. Yeah, Bella like, Bella was much less yeah. annoying. Bella was the instigator in that relationship. I feel, well, obviously it's Christian Grey in this particular relationship. Yeah, um, I just want to say about Anastasia. Um, to sum up her character, um, well, obviously she never questions. Well, she she does. Question yeah, she complains. Christian Grey sometimes, but there's like examples of which you know it just things that just don't make sense like when uh, Christian stalks her to the hardware store and um, you know she turns the aisle and she sees this guy that she interviewed yesterday you know and has known for like uh, 10 minutes uh, she doesn't ask like oh how, di how did you find me here you know she's not she doesn't seem creeped out at all uh, even when he jokes about being a serial killer yeah uh, she, yeah and then uh, then obviously he kidnaps her and undresses her um, and it's established that she knows it's odd. Like she's not that naive to know. Yeah, this is strange. Yeah. Because she says to her friend, "It's odd," but yeah, she just goes along with it. Um, I yeah, I think she's yeah, she's a pathetically like weak character, <laughs> and yes, I think she she uh, displays I guess the worst of like feminine stereotypes. Yes. Um, and you, you know, you you think um, her character at least was written by you know a bunch of red pill guys. Oh uh, god! Who think yeah. like all all women are are like are like this, just waiting for an alpha male to come and uh, dominate. Yes, I'm going to have to talk about um, kind of the way this film plays into like red pill ideas about uh, gender yes. and things like that. Um, but oh yeah, one of the things. That, well, well, I yeah. I just want to say uh, the perfect example of this, and, uh, and then I'll shut up. That's fine. Then. The perfect the perfect example of this was when she was angry uh, at her car being replaced and Christian Grey buying her a new car, uh, and then the next scene uh, she lets uh, him spank her. Yes. Uh, like she she gets really annoyed that she uh, he's done this to her, and then oh. Christian Grey says, "You oh, you rolled your eyes at me, you know what that means." And then he spanks her, and then that's it. Yes. No, that you know, it's just yeah. All in all, a ridiculous uh, character. It's just a stage of the worst. Thing. Uh, <laughs> yes. I want I want to talk about Christian Grey now because Christian, I've got to say, yes. is much easier to talk about without reference to Anastasia, which says a lot. He is our our secondary yes. character, and yet you can talk about him independent of our primary character. You can't talk about our primary character independent of Christian. Um, one of the things I, I want to talk about is that, first of all, basically 99% of what I have to say about Christian is entirely about this idea of, is he really attractive? Um, and on a physical level, um, I see, I have, I, I obviously I'm a man. Well, one of his eyes is a bit fucked Yeah, I, did you notice that? Yeah, I was thinking that, like, I don't think he is really attractive. Um, like you, and the thing is, like obviously, I'm a heterosexual man. I, you know, I'm not saying I, I'm the absolute authority on who's an attractive man, but I feel like you know, usually, and I guess it's probably true for you. You know, you don't have to be gay to understand that a man is attractive. But with Christian Grey, it's like, I mean, obviously, he's not unattractive. Everything is is where it needs to be, pretty much. Like, I'm not suggesting anyone's going to go like, oh, two out of ten wouldn't bang, but. I don't think he is staggeringly hot, you know, physically. Uh, I guess not. Yeah. But he is. He he is in the yeah. Um, hot range. Yeah, he's I guess. in the hot range. I'd say he's in yeah. the lower end, and I'm sure they could. I mean, for example, I think Robert Patterson. Patterson, is his name Patterson or Pattinson? Patterson. Yeah, Robert Patterson. I think Robert yeah. Patterson is better looking than Christine Grey, even with. Oh, I'd, well, I'd have to disagree. Oh. With 
I don't think so. Maybe a, cat, a, a U team team Christian, I know. Um, but uh, yeah, the other, the other... now Robert Pattinson's face just looks. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I associate him with the makeup, but uh, I do think Christian. I wrote this down. This was pretty much the first thing I wrote down for the second one. I wrote down Christian looks hotter because I thought I don't know why he he seemed to look more attractive in the second film. Uh, oh, it's because of the beard. Yeah, that's, I think that's it. Yeah, beards yeah. just make everyone look better. But um, the other th- yeah, they do. The other thing is physically, um, he he doesn't seem to know how to smile, and if if he smiles more in the second one. Yeah, again, he seems to get much more attractive in the second one. I actually have a lot to say about kind of how I preferred the second film as the short answer, but um, it, he yes. Uh, the thing is, like, if you speak to most girls, I'm sure one of the things they'll consistently say about guys is like, oh, he's got a nice smile. Like That's quite a common thing. And yet in the first film, he is just trying, it seems like he's trying to be so kind of serious and moody. Um, it reminds me of, have you ever seen Drive starring Ryan Gosling? Uh, what happens in that movie? Um, I... <laughs> You know, what, I, it's something to do with they, they, they do some kind. It's like a heist movie involving driving, um, and he's got like a a girlfriend. That's what I remember about the film. Uh, but the, th- no. the thing I want to talk about is that on 4chan, and we've got to, if we're going to mention Red Pill at some point, we've got to talk about 4chan. There was well, this, yeah, I there was this post it. about this guy, and he was saying like, I saw Ryan Gosling in Drive, and I thought he was so cool. And the thing Ryan Gosling does in Drive basically is he never smiles never really talks, says like the minimum amount of stuff he possibly can. You know, a girl walks up to him and he's like, oh, hi, and he just goes, hey, and then doesn't do anything. Um, and this guy is basically this kind of fantasy story this guy had written uh, on 4chan about like how like, oh, I just, you know, I met this girl and I didn't say anything to her. And then that, that drove her crazy. And it's kind of like, you think about kind of, obviously we both went to university together, and I don't know, like I wasn't paying that much attention to people, but I think about like the people who seem to be doing kind of quite well with girls and like, you know, obviously we we had a few kind of mutual friends who seem to be quite to the catches. And when I think about them, the main thing I think about is that they seemed like really nice people. Like all the people I know from uh, university who seem to have, you know, a girlfriend and uh, a stable, happy relationship were people who seemed really friendly, really happy, the type of people you can imagine kind of being quite boisterous and laughing. And that's why I think, like, obviously Christian's brother seems like such a nice person. And, you know, it's kind of weird to me, because it's like, not only is he so bizarre in the way he has just no charisma at all, and he's just silent and weird, but I also, I don't think women find that attractive. I feel like the idea that women... Well, find... the, the box office says otherwise. But, yeah, I think it's kind of just like, it's one okay, of those things well, where I, you I, like I think it. I'm going to clarify it. Okay. Women find the Christian Grey as a fantasy yes, attractive. Yes, that's it. But actually, as a, you know, a partner in a relationship, I'm going to say no. Yeah, there's... there's that's, I think... You, you yeah. would not... The, the real people who seem to, in real life, do well with, with women seem to be the people who are more charismatic i mean one of the things i had to make a comparison to was um where i wrote channing tatum and marlon brando as examples because channing i guess you obviously you know do you are you familiar with young marlon brando from a streetcar named desire and a lot of films like that um if you haven't seen him then i'll just explain this scene and it's quite a famous scene and i actually watched it um quite re- recently just because i was thinking about it in, in reference to this okay. film um, he comes in, it's, it's from the film A Streetcar Named Desire, he comes in and he's, you know, Marlon Brando, he's kind of got, like, rugged good looks, big, you know, massive popping biceps, and he's wearing this tight t-shirt, and he's kind of been running, and he's sweaty, and there's this girl there, I, oh, well, she's a woman, really, um, and she's a bit kind of, like, prim and proper, and she's like, oh, hey there, and he's like, oh, hi, I didn't see you there, like, I don't know, doing this great voice but the thing is like the whole thing just everything about the way he acts just exudes kind of confidence and control and you you go into the comments and obviously it's you know a bunch of women understandably being like you know wow this guy's you know so attractive and you think like yeah he is and it's it's not just 
being physically good looking everything like the way he carries himself the confidence he has all seems really attractive and then you look at someone like Channing Tatum obviously he's got this thing where uh, he kind of rose to fame with the film Step Up where he's a really good dancer and you know apparently women like really good dancers unfortunately for for us (laughs) Um, but you know he's and wow everything he does in like um the, the the way he moves and it's just like it makes so much sense that he's a heartthrob even though Channing Tatum I think looks a bit like a beefy loser no not a loser but like a moron um but the he or like in 20 minutes, yes 22 jumps yes yeah. but he you can tell like and it's not it's I don't think it's ever as simple as just oh he looks good therefore he's attractive it's he looks good and he acts confident and he seems like he has a character and you just think none of that is here there is no character there is no charisma there is nothing uh, and again yeah i mean like you say it's a complete uh fantasy yeah um well i'm going to say this about christian yeah i think he at least is believable yes uh maybe not the billionaire bit but unlike anastasia i can imagine somebody like this actually existing yeah you know this weird creepy stupid <laughs> guy that's the thing yeah he does uh, exist but the thing yeah. I mean yeah we're, we're, maybe we should just well, talk about the red pill now because it's kind of I mean I well, want to yeah. talk about a bit of the BDSM but um, there was this well yeah I, I can talk about this a bit personally because there was a time in my life when I almost got red pilled um, like I was on the verge of getting red pilled because um, All right, this is unexpected. The reason it relates to BDSM is because it was on a uh, subreddit for kind of domineering, abusive pornography, basically. Um, and you know, obviously, being I was about sixteen at the time. I want to say sixteen, seventeen. Um, oh, no, probably not I seventeen. Knew. Yeah, before you knew me. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's all that matters. So, and and I was like, oh, you know, on it, and obviously being that it was kind of BDSM pornography um, there was a lot of this talk of you know oh women need to be dominated women need you know this uh, strong independent stuff and I remember there was this post on there and it was like you know they, they, they shared lifestyle stuff and one of the things on there was like top 10 ways to dominate women and it was like genuinely uh, Christian Grey stalker red pill uh sociopathic kind of stuff like just messing with someone and like the uh dennis system yes it was like the dennis system um and then there was another time when people would literally say things like there was obviously and i think this is quite common in kind of like when you're dealing with abusive pornography actual like active misogyny like people saying things like you know women are stupid women are whores xyz um and impressionable you know 16 year old me just thought and this was also a point in my life when i was because i I don't know if you ever thought this when i was i was not always a a woke feminist uh there was a time in my life when i actually believed the whole well we've already achieved gender equality and feminists are just complaining about nothing i used to believe that and at this and you know that in combination with all this kind of like oh women love it when you dominate them stuff uh led to me being like oh, I want to start doing this stuff. And I kind of, I imagined in my head this idea of me as a kind of guy who just, uh, you know, is abusive and horrible and uh, doesn't pay any regard to women. This is a very personal story. Well, kind of, yeah. Um, Yeah. And then then the thing is, I just, the the main, I don't know uh, what would have happened if, if I'd kind of got more into it. I think, like, no matter what, I probably would have. It's a very interesting and tragic no not tragic i don't know what it's a it's a good it's a veritable biopic the story of how i became a feminist really because uh i i obviously i guess you can tell from the number of times i've mentioned it that i've always been kind of into the whole 4chan thing um yeah so uh, it's kind of, it's fascinating yes and 4chan stuff. yeah and that's the thing yeah. I, I almost went into it and i could imagine easily uh, someone who buys into that stuff, having got so close to buying into myself, being like Christian Grey, being like, you know, just just an arsehole, basically. 
So you could you could say that people watching this movie who are impressionable young men, uh, men could see Christian Grey as a sort of. I model. I really do think that this film has kind of genuine. It will have I think or could have negative implications for a lot of people watching yeah. this kind of stuff. Um, well, that is interesting. Yeah. Well, I will just say this about Christian Grey. Uh, obviously, well, he, he, yeah, he's a he's a really bad guy, isn't he? Yes. Uh, he's a. <laughs> he's a. Uh, I well, I put one word down that I think sums it up well. Uh, predator. Yes. That's what he is, and obviously he sees Anastasia as his prey. I guess you know uh, when he uh, when he saves uh, her at the bar. Yeah. Uh, you know when she's drunk. Uh, I was I was wondering why did he like rush off like so quickly, like obviously uh, she hadn't signed any contracts or anything, so you know she was allowed to drink. Uh, he he let her drink, and why why was she uh, why was he so worried that uh, she was drunk? And I think it was because he was like, oh, there's a chance that another uh, man could get her. Mm. Like no, she's mine. She's this, this girl is mine. She's my. Uh, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. I, I guess there's kind of this idea. I feel like the root of misogyny, in a way, is hatred of other men. Because the root of misogyny is kind of um, this idea. Of, well, in, yeah. in this particular case, it's he doesn't trust other men because he knows he's an arsehole. So he assumes. Yes. And that's. I, I think that's definitely um, an element of it. Uh, I. I now I'm officially done with Christian, and we can talk about just the nature oh, of this no. horrible relationship. Well, yeah, I, I, I guess. Uh, so this relationship, like you say, is horrible. Uh, but as an audience member, we are meant to sort of want them to get together, I guess. Want Anastasia to get together with Christian. Because it, this movie, I mean, we'll get onto that a bit later, but it tends to be yeah. a love story. Yeah, it's but here's, weird. But here's the thing about Christian Grey. How can anybody root for him? How can anybody say or, or want Anastasia to uh, be with him? This is the guy that psychologically manipulates her, um, you know, into being his submissive, I guess, or, or tries to. Uh, uses his uh, power uh, to intimidate her, uh, indoctrinates her, by buying her gifts, yeah, um, and obviously the helicopter oh, rides, yeah. uh, and obviously uh, there's a uh, there's this video uh, by a guy called Film Theory, oh, or the guy who does yeah, I think uh, I know. There's about films about how, yeah, he breaks this down well about how Christian kind of uh, indoctrinates Anna into this cult or behaves like a cult leader, yeah, uh, slowly drawing Anna uh, into his grasp, and yeah, uh, that doesn't sound too romantic to me. Uh, so yeah, I don't know how anybody could see Christian Grey as, I guess, a Mr. Darcy type, you know, in Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Um, I, get, I, I mean, I don't know, I haven't read Pride and Prejudice, but I think that's what Mr. Darcy's meant to be. Like this kind of, um, you know, this uh, very uh, brooding male figure who is attractive. Yeah. Uh, that the, whoever the woman is in Pride and Prejudice, I don't know, I can't remember, wants to be with. Um, but yeah, well, yeah. I don't know how you can root for this relationship. On the subject of uh, him being abusive, there's a scene where, uh, well, first of all, there's a common thing throughout this film which you know is going to happen. It's the whole, I'm going to hurt you, and I can't hurt you. You know, I'm like the thing that that Christian sort of says is like, oh, I'm not good enough for you. He kind of is like, because you're so innocent, you're so sweet and I'll just ruin you. And he kind of has that scene, and then he stops talking to her. And it's like, you can just... You, you have this feeling in your head that it's like, he knows what he's doing. Like, you, I, I feel like... There is not this sense of he actually believes that he's shouldn't be with her. He is saying this kind of, uh, oh, I don't want to hurt you, uh, you're too innocent... Um, you you shouldn't be with me stuff and he's saying it with no intention of following through with it he's saying it just to mess with her and the thing is and this is when I just wrote down like how abusive it was he says all of that he breaks up with her and then he buys her presents um, I can't remember what the present is he buys her it's not it's not the car or anything like that oh you, you mean the Jane oh 
the box. Yes, that was it, yeah. So he says yeah. to her, like, oh, I can't be in a relationship with you because I am abusive, you know, I'm not right for you. It's going to hurt you in the long run. And then he buys her presents, and that's just so abusive. Okay, one last thing on Christian Grey. He is kind of, um, you know one, what an ideal type is? Uh, an ideal type? Yes. Uh, not, not in the... Uh, con- okay, yeah, okay, t- well, tell it's, me. It's a sociological term. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm wondering if you maybe picked up on that. Uh, but basically, it refers to uh, something which, well, like it says, it's an, the ideal version of something. So, uh, in this case, I think Christian Grey, uh, we've mentioned Red Pill before, but I think Christian Grey would be the ideal type uh, for a man. Yeah. Uh, according to uh, Red Pillars. Yes, that's like this true. This guy who is. Well, like I said before, an absolute predator who dominates women uh, and alpha does what he wants. So yeah, that is uh, that is the kind of guy um, who, like, like we said before, uh, young impressionable uh, males may uh, see him as uh, a kind of uh, role model, look up to him. Uh, and obviously, we're meant to in this movie Fifty Shades of Grey uh, want him to get with uh, Anastasia. Uh, yes. Want this relationship to be successful. Yeah. On the subject of him, of him being predatory, I think. Um, I mean, obviously, we mentioned the fact she's a virgin. Um, I think mm-hmm. we mentioned the fact, uh, and the fact he he seems to be kind of like really attracted to that, uh, which obviously is again yes. a pretty pet predatory. Uh, yes. Thing for, thing for him to do. Um, well, yeah, like innocence naivete, like this. Yeah. This person who I can um, like take advantage yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was that um, I I would have thought what I started thinking in this film is that I could only imagine this film being very frustrating for women because it's basically uh, obviously one of the kind of stereotypes of a relationship is there's this idea of the woman wanting to change or fix the man. Um, and obviously, again, yeah. that's a that's a stereotype. It doesn't, but um, obviously, it, it's something that I imagine does occur. And this film is obviously introduces that element. There is an element of she wants Christian Grey to be uh, different. She wants to be able to, for example, sleep in the same bed with him, and he isn't comfortable with that. Uh, he wants her to take him. Oh, sorry, <laughs> no. She wants him to take her on dates. Uh, even though he said that he didn't do that. But the thing is, most of this film is basically just a woman trying and failing to turn a horrible guy into a good boyfriend. Like, there are some moments where, you know, it's like, oh, he's like, oh, I'll let you sleep in the same bed with me, and I'll take you on dates. But those are very small things that you could get with any And boyfriend. those moments are only really uh, for him to, uh, I guess... Uh, win favor with Anastasia. Yeah. So he he uses okay. I'll sleep in the same bed with you, so you get so you do this for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's it's very uh. He uses kind of, it as yes. like a negotiating tactic or bargaining chip. Uh yeah, I mean there is one thing which I thought was um. At the start of the, the second film, uh, there's a bit where she's kind of. The film, the first film ends, if I'm right, with her saying that she doesn't want to even be in a relationship with him anymore. Um, and then the second film, they she, he meets her for the first time in the second film, and he's basically like, "Hey, let's go outside." And they go outside, and he just kisses her right away with no consent. He's not in a relationship with her at this point, um, and he pretty much just, you know, she's like mid sentence or something. And again, like obviously. It's a stereotype in a, in films that, or I don't know if a stereotype is the right word, but cliche that the man goes in and kisses the woman abruptly and romantically, quote, and of course, 100% of the time, if you're kissing someone like that, you're not waiting for consent, you are basically assaulting them. Um, which, I mean, like part of that is just the whole movie magic thing, where it's like, yes. oh, in films you can get away with it. But then obviously combine that with the fact that he's so aggressive uh, and, and predatory and you've got this guy forcing himself on a woman yeah 
Uh, yeah, their relationship, um, I wouldn't really call it healthy. Yes, uh, I want to talk about how, like, I mean, their relationship is incredibly vapid, um, because there's this bit where, um, I mean, first of all, the the kind of conceit of this film, and this is a sort of the kind of feminine emotional masturbation, where he's basically saying, like, all she's changed him, you know, because it's like, oh, usually I don't let women sleep in my bed with me. Usually I don't go on dates with women. But you're different. And anything... You're special. Yeah, but what could she... What is that about her? That is, she is the least special person in I the know. universe. I was thinking that when, uh, obviously in the second movie, when uh, it's, it's more uh, pronounced, I guess, when uh, that they get together and he's, like, doing things he never did with other women. Yeah. But I don't understand why... Why Anastasia? Why yes, this girl? What's so his special motivation about makes it? no sense. Um, yeah, especially when you think like um, well, actually we'll talk about we'll talk about her later. But when you compare Anastasia to that kind of submissive other ex submissive he has, who is you know uh, crazy, and you think like for example, what what is it about her that means that she can't? She couldn't have pleased Christine in that way. And there is no explanation. One of the, the hot takes I heard about this film from... Um, I've mentioned her a couple of times on this show. She It just so happens that she's... I don't know. She seems to be relevant to a lot. Jenny Nicholson has a video about Fifty Shades Darker. And I think one of the things she said in it, which is definitely true, is that she said uh, the author, meaning E.L. James, um, hates all women and views them as romantic rivals. And you definitely get that impression from these two films. You get the impression that the person who came up with this story must just hate other women. And this is a classic example of, like, a film that basically encourages this idea of, like, infighting and, you know, the problem isn't this abusive man, it's the other women. Um, which yeah. is, is kind of a... But, one of the things I wanted to talk about was obviously the temptation is and, and a kind of reality is that this film would make a lot more sense if it was just Christian is using her for sex she is using Christian for money that would be you know that that is what but then Anastasia would... loses her innocence yes um, but there's there's this scene where they get on the heli they have a helicopter ride um, and they go on this helicopter ride, and it starts playing "Love Me Like You Do" by love Ellie Goulding. Like you do. And I was thinking that I was thinking like, but this isn't love. This is okay, like yeah. the so the, cli the kind of yeah. emotional climax in the soundtrack is this you know song blaring out about love, and it's just he's, he's taken her on a helicopter okay. ride. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to get onto, Michael. One of the points was yeah. this film tries to trick you into thinking it's a romantic film. <laughs> um, so the helicopter ride is a perfect example of that. Uh, the If you actually watch the uh, movie, uh, and I remember watching it for the first time, the helicopter ride felt completely out of sync with the rest of the movie because you got this upbeat song and they're all happy, you know, in the sky, going from yeah. Portland to Seattle. And, it's, and the previous, however... Uh, much of the movie was just n not like that at all. It wasn't very happy or romantic or anything, but I guess you have to put this in to try and, like I said, trick people into thinking, oh, these two people are in love. Yeah. And it's the, sa uh, it's the same thing uh, with the dancing. There's a bit in, like, halfway through the movie when they're dancing, and again, that's completely like, yeah, a step with the rest of the film. It's almost like they... Do you know the whole thing with the Suicide Squad? Where, um... Yeah, originally make it Harley corner. Quinn, Harley Quinn and the Joker, uh, were written in the original context to have a kind of abusive relationship, which is the relationship that is seen in the comics and the animated series. Uh, yeah. Harley, the Joker is abusive to Harley Quinn, and it's implied that he basically hates her. Um, and then what they did in the editing is they edited lots of scenes with the Joker and Harley in it to basically make it look less abusive um, 
like the the famous example, and I, I haven't actually seen Suicide Squad yet because if, let's just say it's not on my list of films I really want to see. But yeah. um, there's a scene where the Joker pushes Harley Quinn out of a helicopter, and in the original edit, he just pushes her out because he is a psychopath who doesn't care about her, which is consistent with their relationship in in the comics. But in the theatrical edit they edited it so it looked like he was saving her and it's kind of like like I say I haven't seen Suicide Squad but what you hear is well it looks jumbled and none of it fits into place and it's this kind of I, I think films films aren't brave enough to make a film that is actually uh, abusive it's funny that this is a more abusive relationship than Suicide Squad I'm almost certain but... yeah. well the thing is like this movie came out uh, near Valentine's Day oh. Like, and this obviously darker came out near Valentine's Day as did Fifty Shades Freed now, and it's just ridiculous this is not a story about romance yeah. this is a story about abuse it's not like Pride and Prejudice Yeah. Uh, it's more I guess I don't know Silence of the Lambs I mean maybe yeah maybe I'm going a bit too far no yeah I, I see what you're saying yeah but, yeah yeah it's it's ridiculous to say this is a romantic yeah. story. I actually I want to talk about um, the closest this film got because I think there's an element in which this film is trying to be empowering for women. Well, there's an element in which this film should be empowering for women because this is a film for women. So you think being that it's a film for women it would give women kind of positive reinforcing messages and on the whole it doesn't do that but there's one scene which i guess they're trying to do that where it's kind of this is again i think in the second film this is why it's kind of like i don't know that we're ever going to be able to split it because to me it just felt like one long horrible film but um in the second film i think that they're playing pool and she says like oh if i win in pool then you get to have sex with me and throughout the whole thing she's like teasing him and I can only guess that's trying to kind of introduce some sort of balance to the film because it's like yeah. but it's kind of bizarre because it's like most of the film has or most of the series, the two films has been Christian being the kind of sexual aggressor and her being completely passive and then just there's this completely weird scene where they're playing pool and she's like oh if I win you have sex with me and it's like hold on a minute you know oh ooh, I hope hope she doesn't win I preferred their relationship in the second film yeah well yeah the, we'll get the, shall we get onto yeah. that a bit later um, uh yes yeah, um, yeah but yeah and do you want to talk about BDSM or... I wanted to actually you know I've just got a, tiny, a few more things I've got All right, go one on, thing about on. their relationship and one other thing that can lead into it Okay, go um, on. actually I've got two things about the relationship one of the things I want to talk about is that there's a lot of lip biting in this film uh, and one of the things that kind of I have this theory that lip biting is like one of the first things that women work out is sexual because lip biting it was just how you pretended to be sexy when you didn't really know how to actually demonstrate being sexy. So it's kind of like, obviously, in real life, you can communicate that you are sexually interested in someone through your body language and your uh, and the way you talk to them and, you know, by, like, being happy and smiling and things like that. But because this is a terrible screenplay and, I think, terrible actors... I haven't seen the actors in anything else, but I get the impression that they're not great actors and the characters themselves have no charisma, you can't actually give any real indication that they're attracted to each other because there's nothing in their body language or the way they act around each other that implies it. So you just throw in loads and loads of lip biting, which I thought was uh, pretty stupid. And the other thing is that uh, it seems to me like... And I, I wish I could remember the exact examples of this because I just wrote this down, and I'm sure thinking about it, it is true... There's several moments where Christian just seems to do, like, stupid things from a relationship standpoint, like, things that completely go against her character. I mean, like, the obvious thing is he buys her loads of stuff, even though she makes clear she doesn't like being bought stuff. 
And it's like, why would you want to date someone who the one thing about your personality that you completely make clear to him, you know, you don't want to be bought all this stuff, um, is something he just ignores? Like, why would you want to date someone? Like, I would have thought an important thing in a relationship is being able to pick up on, you know, the type of person you're dating. But, And I guess, like, you reach a weird point where you're like, is it that he's supposed to ignore her? And that's what makes him, you know, it's like, oh, she said she didn't want to be bought all this stuff, but really he, she did. So he's a good guy for ignoring her. And obviously it's just dumb. Um, but finally, just to kind of get us into the BDSM, are you familiar with lamp shading? No. Okay. Lamp shading is a thing that filmmakers do when they make a kind of problematic joke, like a sexist joke or a racist joke, where they directly draw attention to the fact they've made the joke. So there'll be a kind of cheap, lazy, racist joke and then a character will go, um, that's a little racist. And the idea is it's, it's like, hey, look, we know we're, we're saying we're being racist, so it's fine. And there's a bit in the film, I think it's um, the, the roommate who says this. Uh, it might actually be Anastasia herself who says it, but they kind of say it as like a joke. They go, huh, that's abusive. And it's like something Christian Grey does. And they're like, you know, that's abusive, that's creepy, that's predatory. And it's like, it's that classic example of when you know you're doing something that's so shitty as a filmmaker that you have to have one of the characters point it out so it can seem like self-aware. So it's like, oh, we know it's kind of creepy, but because we've acknowledged it, it's not a problem. Uh, Which is kind of, that's the... um, And obviously, that happens repeatedly with... BDSM, which I guess we, we want to talk about how this film yes. treats well, BDSM. Yeah, BDSM in this film um, basically is treated like it's abuse. Uh, BDSM equals abuse, which uh, I don't. I think uh, obviously BDSM to some extent involves pain, but I think uh, uh, saying it's abuse uh, goes a step too far. Yeah. Um... I, 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 one of the things I found interesting about this film is that it kind of manages to annoy both people. And the way it does that is it annoys... I mean, I'm going to act as if there's only two people in the world and there are or two kind of dichotomies. But to simplify something to a dichotomy, there are some people out there who are against BDSM because they think it is typically abusive towards women. And there are some people out there who are actively engaged in BDSM because they enjoy it and they think it's perfectly healthy and yeah, they think you can do exactly. it you know, and still be respectful yeah. towards women. But this film manages to piss them both off yeah. because what it does is it shows, it, it eroticizes BDSM. And like, for example, I can't imagine a kind of radical feminist uh, kind of sex critical kind of person watching this and thinking it's good, you know, because obviously it's eroticizing BDSM, it's eroticizing abuse, and yet at the same time, and this is what I think would annoy the BDSM people, uh, they show BDSM as resulting from Christian Grey's abusive childhood. Yes. The thing is, obviously it's implied he was abused as a kid, and then it's kind of his mum abused him, and he beats up these women. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, the in order to get yeah, over the it. The film acts like uh, Christian Grey uh, likes BDSM because he's damaged. That's why he's yeah. into it. And uh, it treats BDSM as something kind of to be ashamed of. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad thing. And and I obviously, I don't think that's the case. I mean, yeah. I'm, yeah. yeah. But the other thing I want to talk about, and this is another element in which this is going to annoy radical feminists because I am I am sympathetic to the claim that there is at least a lot of people who enjoy abusing women in a sexual context that is a manifestation of actual misogyny now I'm not going to like kind of make a claim on who is and is not a misogynist but I think just kind of the and that's that's just I'm just saying that for full disclosure um, but one of the things that I found interesting is that 
there's an element of this film that kind of plays into this uh, common idea in rape culture. Because if... So if we assume for a minute, because I think this is what the film sort of wants us to assume, if we assume that BDSM is sort of misogynistic, then you run into this interesting problem because there's this uh, myth in rape culture uh, which is most probably prob uh, properly stated as the deranged rapist. And the argument is... The only guys who commit rape are deranged kind of psychopathic lunatics who have these deep evil problems with them. Like the only like it's kind of the Disney villain rapist. Yes. And of course, the the reality is, um, as you know, I mean, a, any kind of person who knows about rape culture will tell you is that you know the reason rape occurs is typically because of male entitlement, men thinking you know, well. I should be allowed to have sex with this woman because X, Y, Z, you know, misogynistic myth. And obviously, uh, what this film kind of does is it makes, by making Christian Grey this uh, kind of evil, deranged person, and I guess evil, maybe not the right word, but kind of a damaged person, yeah. it ignores the idea that if, if Christian Grey exists, and we can return back to the idea of him as kind of a, an ideal type mm -hmm. of a red pill male, yes. uh, if he exists, he would not be someone who was abused as a child or, you know, someone who has these kind of deep, emotionally complex issues. He would just be a guy who was raised in a misogynistic, patriarchal culture who, surprise, surprise, has some bad, problematic ideas about women. It lies about what, e even if we imagine for a minute that this film is about misogyny which I guess if this film has a point then it should be about misogyny of course this film yeah. doesn't have a point <laughs> uh, but even if it was about misogyny it's saying all the wrong things about misogyny, it's saying like oh the only person who's misogynistic is this guy who lives in a uh, evil mansion um, <laughs> and penthouse. is completely yeah well you yeah. said basically people who enjoyed BDSM uh, didn't like it and uh, I read yeah. an article actually in the Guardian about how okay, uh, they, yeah. uh, uh, this BDM um, person said uh, the uh, film is dangerous uh, because it encourages um, BDSM guys to treat uh, vulnerable inexperienced women like that you know instead of going through yeah. the, the small steps that it that it takes uh, you know Christian Grey and you know immediately uh, how long does he know Anna uh uh, <laughs> and the, it it could be as little as a couple of days, yeah. and then she's tied um, up. Uh, yeah. yeah, and she's obviously never had sex before. So yeah, it's yes, that is it is it is. So the film right can be considered uh, dangerous in its portrayal of yeah. BDSM. I I one hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. I think it's it's definitely um, one of the things that there's a bit which is kind of good. He says um, he says quite early on. BDSM is about honesty. I think it's in the uh, the scene where they're kind of talking about the contract, and he's like, "Oh, BDSM is about honesty, so be honest about what you do and don't want." And I feel like my only explanation for that is that someone kind there was someone involved who knew a bit about BDSM. I was like, "Okay, let's try and like not make <laughs> BDSM see completely horrible," yeah. but then at the same time, the author, the rest of the plot, yeah. the yes. author E. L. James, um, I think, has a very rudimentary understanding of BDSM. Yes. Um, you know what, you could talk about this. Are you familiar with the term pornification? Because uh, it's pretty much what yeah. it sounds like. It's about kind of the, the mainstreaming of, uh, I guess you'd say pornographic ideas, things like uh, like BDSM and kind of the, the new idea of like, it, it's become mainstream to like choking in sex, for example. Um, and I think a lot of people who are into BDSM as a kind of more sophisticated practice, for want of a better word, um, have been quite critical of the way that films like Fifty Shades of Grey and things like that have made it so this stuff that can actually be quite dangerous, because it, you know, obviously, I mean, it kind of goes without saying, but it can be quite dangerous yeah. to choke someone. Yeah. Um, but it's becoming like, oh, if you don't do this, then you're a prude almost at this point. 
um, I, I, I made a, a joke, I kind of want to bring this up, so there's a bit where Christian Grey is like, um, you have to sign a, a form saying that you consent, and it reminds me of, have you ever had anyone say to you, or heard anyone say, feminists believe you should have to sign a contract before you have sex? Uh, I'm sure I've heard something like because that. Because I... I, I've heard it, I, I always hear it whenever I mention, um, affer or whenever I or anyone else has mentioned affirmative consent. For some reason, I don't know where this idea came from, because affirmative consent has never meant this, but there seems to be loads of people who think that affirmative consent means signing a contract, which I just thought was a uh, kind of like... But in a way, it's almost like... like this film hints at the idea of false rape accusations being a problem, which I guess is like, I mean, obviously false rape accusations exist, but the idea that this, this guy is paranoid about false rape accusations, I think nine times out of 10, the people who are, who are kind of terrified of the prospect of being falsely accused of rape are going to be people who are actually misogynistic. You know, I've never met yeah. a kind of, yeah, fair yeah. Enough. but uh, um, maybe that's just, I don't know is signing a contract common when it comes to BDSM I don't know I I think a discussion would be yeah I'm not sure about that I, I don't know how common it is but um, I think I've got not much else to say about I mean obviously one of the things I wanted to say about BDSM and this is a very generic point but it's something that happens throughout uh, and I think I've already said this this film kind of aspires to the task of asking interesting questions about BDSM, like why do people commit BDSM? Why do people enjoy this kind of stuff? It aspires to those questions and it has pretenses to those questions well, but then the of course it is simple. fundamentally They, they, they uh, like to get up on it. Yeah, yes. I mean I, I, I'm not yes. going to give the film credit for that. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I think obviously um, there's, I mean for example you can uh, and I think there's some merit to you can read a book about BDSM and, and kind of, or, or questions like for example, is pornography good for women, is it abusive does, uh, for example, there are actually statistics that show that watching violent pornography makes men more likely to have misogynistic attitudes, so you can look, there is a kind of non-fiction debate to be had about, you know, um, obviously I think there's probably going to be a middle ground, like I'm not going to say every single person engaged in BDSM is wrong, but then at the same time there's also, it's not like, oh, uh, the complete mainstreaming of these attitudes is a good thing. And I think there's, you know, the film could have asked those questions and actually had an interesting character study. Um, actually, I have to make this comparison. Have you seen a film called Don John? No. It is by, uh, it stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt and I think Scarlett Johansson, um, but I think I'm right in saying Joseph Gordon-Levitt is part of a campaign called Fight the New Drug, and Fight the New Drug is an anti-pornography campaign, um, and I obviously I, I, we don't want to have a conversation about that because that could take a while, but the film itself is about someone with a pornography addiction and it's basically a romantic comedy romantic drama about uh, a woman Scarlett Johansson kind of negotiating how she deals with her significant others pornography addiction yeah I th I th I've heard uh, about this yes yes yeah. Think, yeah and the thing is like I haven't seen it, so... No, I haven't uh, seen it either, but I do, yeah, I've heard yeah. about it, yeah. But, and I think, for example, that is probably an interesting film. Uh, and then you could imagine, you know, I mean, obviously it's, it was... This film was never going to be good. Uh, but you could imagine that it's possible that you could have an interesting film that deals with questions of, you know, is uh, or can BDSM actually be uh, a reflection? I, and I think definitely it can. Uh, it, it isn't always, but I think definitely it can be the case that someone enjoys beating women and abusing women because, yeah. shock horror, they have bad attitudes towards women. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. The last thing I want to say is not about BDSM, so do you have any... I mean, not the last well, yeah, thing, I just but... want to sum up about BDSM. Uh, I mean, we talked yeah, a lot fine. about it, but yeah, this film does not handle the subject well. 
Pat's no, off. yes. yes. Um, there's watch, uh, watch, kink, <laughs> watch sex and submission by kink, and that will uh, that will be a much better <laughs> education. <laughs> what, what 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 movie is that? Yeah. Uh, Oh, I know. Yeah, um, I, I understand what you. Yeah. Yes. Right. Uh, spousal training too. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. I want to talk about one of the things I was kind of wondering until it happened was how is this film, go- or how graphic is this film going to be? It wasn't that with its portrayal bad. of sex. Yeah, because I mean it's weird because on some level, obviously, I mean I just referenced uh, a pornography film, yeah. and it's kind of fitting because there's an element in which, of course, this is erotic fiction. And I'm, you know, you'd think usually if you wanted to adapt erotic fiction, you would adapt it into a kind of, not necessarily a pornographic film, but um, a a film that pretty much has porn in it. Um, Yeah. Uh, And I guess, obviously, if you don't do that, you end up with a film that has no plot. And (laughs) Well, that, 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 I guess the, uh, the test for this film would be can you make a pornographic parody of it or would there be any point making a pornographic parody of Fifty Shades of Grey uh, and to be honest I think yeah because there's not like this the sex in, in this movie uh, isn't yeah. that like oh wow like it was, yeah I was, it was I was wondering was if you'd of, see boobs yeah there was a lot of boobs. <laughs> there was a lot of I guess vanilla uh, sex I think yeah. that's what Christian Grey calls it uh, yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. I'm sure in the novel there's a lot more uh, detail, but I yeah. guess they had to maybe balance it out. You know, they couldn't. Uh, they tra- they were trying to make this film mainstream, I guess, because at the end of the day, it's yes. a lot of money. So, it would be yeah. very kind of weird if uh, if you just had actual kind of pornography in the film. There's yeah. um. Lars von Trier has a habit. It's kind of a weird thing that he does. Uh, whenever he has a sex scene, he will actually show uh, a shot of a penis going into a vagina, um, and that's what I was uh, like. That's kind of like what I was thinking in my head. Like, um, imagine if, uh, and it's kind of weird in a way because obviously that's something that you pretty much never see. Like, you see sex scenes all the time in films, yeah. but the one thing you almost never see in a film is a shot of a penis going into a vagina. Um, yeah, and I, I, let's just say I'm not surprised that wasn't in this film. Yes. But um, I guess that would be the... Um, going too I, far, I guess. I think, yeah, you could definitely make a... Um, are you familiar with something called fuckster position? <laughs> have, have a guess. <laughs> See, it's, it's on Reddit. It's not actually like... It's kind of... It, I feel like it's more of an editing practice than anything else. It's about... What you do is you take kind of scenes from a film and you splice in pornography in such a way as to make the sex scene seem more real. And there's an entire subreddit about it. Um, and I don't know if people actually watch it as porn. I think it seems kind of weird because it will be like, for example, people will splice in a sex scene from, you know, any given film and then they will find a similar looking pornographic actor and splice in that content and I, I was kind of thinking you could probably make a an interesting edit of the, I mean not interesting because this film isn't at all interesting <laughs> but it would be interesting the to see how the X-rated version of Fifty Shades of Grey which sounds weird I guess yes yeah that's okay uh, well I just want to say one more thing about the sex thing that's fine obviously people uh, what, what's the main draw of this movie why, why would an audience member go and see yeah, the plot. You know what? Actually, I have to say, there are probably actual pornos with a better plot than this. Yeah, I was going to make that point. I'm almost yeah, certain. That have like, you, <laughs> there are porn movies where literally the plot is more engaging yeah. and yeah. interesting than this. Uh, I've been I've been more engaged in whether or not the cable is actually going to get <laughs> fixed uh, than I've been in whether or not yeah. the uh, uh, yeah. this relationship's going to work out. Um, but I was just going to say, I. I couldn't imagine myself watching all these sex scenes with like hundreds of other people. Like, in a <laughs> like it'd just be it it's so bizarre. awkward, yeah, and bizarre. And obviously, loads of people went to see this movie. It was a massive hit, but I know I just just be really weird. Uh, Have you seen Taxi Driver? No, I haven't seen. 
taxi driver. Okay, that's fine. Well, basically, in the 60s and 70s, it used to be a thing, and this obviously makes sense, because TV wasn't as much of a thing, they would actually show porn in cinemas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, late night. At least when you and go think, there yes. to the, one of those porn you know. cinemas, you know what you're, you're going into. Yes. There's no... I guess it's not as awkward, because... You know, you know what you're there for, and this one. Yeah. It's yeah. Yes, I I definitely feel like um, it's it's a, I yeah I can't imagine watching this, in a crowd. I also can't really, imagine because I guess like a lot of the reason why men end up watching this film, is I assume because their, uh, girlfriends and wives want them to watch it with them yeah. like I've heard I heard someone I don't know I saw someone on reddit like on the movie subreddit being like oh my wife dragged me to this film and I think I would feel very weird watching this film with a girl that I was or a woman that I was interested in because it's like you're watching this horrible kind of abusive awkward relationship yeah. And then you're like, um, hmm, like it, it just seems kind of like, like a, a thing I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to. Yeah. It would be like uh, if, so obviously I guess, a lot of guys. That's my good way of avoiding saying me. Um, a lot of guys watch some pretty messed up pornography, um, and I imagine that even girls who are comfortable with their significant others watching that type of content would not want to sit down watch it with, them. with a bag of popcorn yeah. <laughs> and yeah, watch it with them. Um, so well, yeah, I, I think that's... Uh... Seven, dear. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. It's so true, yeah. Um, I, yeah. Well, I had a look at the uh, statistics, yeah. check the statistics, and 70% of moviegoers that saw this were female, so 30% yes. male. And that is probably what you'd expect. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm not a woman, but I like, I had no desire to see this movie uh, from a, like, like, I don't know. Like, it's just, I can't imagine just being in a cinema with a load of people and the the awkwardness of the, uh, the realisation that, oh, this is what we all came to see. Yes, this, it would be... Scenes. Great, wow. It would be so, so strange. Um, you know what, actually, I want to talk about that. I felt, talking about just having a feeling of disappointment and shame, for some reason, this film genuinely made me depressed. I was watching, the, I had to pause, both times I watched, both films I watched, I had to pause it halfway through, because I just felt like, just, just bad. Like, this film left me feeling unhappy. Um... And I think part the of it, the second time I watched this film, cheer you up. <laughs> the <laughs> second time I watched this film, I was feeling a bit ill, um, which maybe explains it. But I just watched it. And I just honestly, like, I swear, the film made me feel like more ill. Like I was like, like, oh, I don't feel oh, very that's well. How I was I watching, felt film and watching Batman v Superman. I I felt like you know what actually I feel like here's a good analogy to Batman v Superman. Right. It was like you know when you're on kind of a ride or like a um, a merry-go-round or whatever yeah and eventually you just start to feel like oh it's a bit too much uh to to your system and then you think you've just got to stop doing it that's how i felt with this film um not like it was just like i was just like oh i need a break from it eventually um i want to move on to uh kind of the actual plot plot so obviously as i've mentioned before the least I had to write about anything was the plot, but I, I want to kind of begin the plot by talking about a different film, Magic Mike. Ah. Now okay. I'm gonna guess you haven't I seen have, Magic I Mike. I have seen Magic Mike. I have also seen Magic I Mike. I can't remember and when I, I said okay. it, but I remember seeing it. So I want to talk about how Magic Mike is obviously a, a female fan service film. I guess is the word. It's you know it's a it's a film about some very attractive men stripping. Yeah, it's uh, like show girls so, for uh, women. Yes, but it actually has kind of like real pretenses to a plot. And yeah. the reason why I ended up watching the film is because it had a four out of five uh, in in our TV paper. We kind of my dad has this thing 
where um, he he goes through the TV paper, and he any film that's a four or a five uh, star rating in the TV paper he records, and even if that film is Magic Mike, so. We start watching it. I didn't know what it was going to be about when I started watching it. Well, you didn't know um, it was about male strippers. None. I don't think. I don't know if either of us did. I think my dad just said, "Oh, it's rated four stars. Record." So we start watching it. Eventually, work out what it is. But the thing is, it it does have a plot, and I wouldn't say it was a good film, no. but I would say it has. You know, Channing Tatum's character. I don't know if you remember this. He has kind of this thing where he wants to start a um a. a bespoke wooden furniture yeah store. he has dreams yeah, yeah he has ambitions and I think I assume this probably isn't true for Magic Mike extra extra large um, uh, no the, the I can't sequel. imagine I imagine they've probably, it's probably become more fast school but the thing is yeah obviously I, I say that to just point out I guess you could also make the argument like the full Monty is kind of similar although I think the full Monty is you know not quite as I mean it, the men aren't as attractive and things like that um, but you know, it, it, at this point, I think filmmakers should be clear on the fact that you can make a film that is principally eye candy, and all you have to do is have a coherent plot just to hold it together. And this Fifty Shades of Grey doesn't the worst do that. Thing. It has. I mean, the thing is, this film, in a way, it has too much plot, and it's hacky. Especially in the second film, because you have yeah. all these villains, all these antagonistic characters, and it's like so dumb. Yes, <laughs> like it's so. And I get again. I have to go back to kind of like the the argument. It could have been a film more like Don John, where it's you know, the the plot is about their relationship, but mm-hmm. the plot back, practically has nothing to do with their relationship. The what, plot is what? It, what is the? She's plot? being stalked. That's... Well, yeah. I, I don't know. It's yeah, just the, like a load of things just happen, and when I yeah, and there's no like pattern to it, and there's a lot of talk about the contract, especially in the second half of the movie after the graduation. Like there's a good like forty minutes where just nothing happens at all, uh, and that pretty much describes the whole second movie. Uh, oh, are you familiar with? Um, see, I, I found this out again from well. Jenny Nicholson. Yeah. I have to credit her with this because I, I watched her. I actually watched her review after watching the films. I had some of her ideas fresh in my head, um, and I didn't know this. The original uh, sequel to, or, or sorry, originally, Fifty Shades Darker was the first half of a very long sequel written by E. L. James, and because it was so long they split it in half. Okay. So, one of the reasons why the second film feels so kind of, like, it has no resolution at all... Yeah. ...is because it, it it was not... I mean, like, I don't think... I mean, obviously the first film was written as one whole film... Yeah. ...or one whole story, and that didn't have a resolution either. But, yeah. It, it is... I mean, the thing is, you can only describe all of the action as just incredibly hacky and dumb... Yeah. and embarrassing well I'm just going to talk about how the plot there's very little of it but it doesn't yeah. really make sense uh, so at the end of the movie the point is Anastasia does not like how uh, how Christian Grey is you know uh, he spanks her a lot and she gets upset by that um, and he questions um well, she, sorry, questions, like, his uh, BDSM, uh, you know, like, love, ten minutes from the end of the movie, even though, you know, the whole movie, like, oh, yeah. since she's walked into the red room, or the playroom or whatever, she knows what he's into, uh, and she asks, why do you want to hurt me? Yeah, oh, and God, yeah, like, that's... Yeah. And how, I, how, yeah. how does she not know that he wants to hurt her because it gets him off? Yes, like I, she's a she's got a four point zero GPA. Yes, she, I wrote um, that's that's kind of that's what caused me. I mentioned when we were talking about Anastasia yeah. how I think she's annoying, and that was the moment. And it's kind of like I, I do feel like it comes from. Uh, it, it's almost as if this film 
is is self aware in a way like as if it's kind of a wink wink thing because uh it's kind of a deconstruction of like in reality or one of the things that happens in films as i've mentioned before is the woman dates the man and she changes him and he's better and he's fixed um and then in reality you know i think a lot of the time you see a guy and you date him and he doesn't magically become a better person he is still the same person he was and then i guess her response to that is to get angry and to um and it's kind of like i i i think about the way that i'm sure uh in fact actually i want to mention this so i was dating a girl and i, I want to talk about the fact she had uh all three Fifty Shades of Grey books on, on her bookshelf. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And I think to myself, I don't really like going on dates. Like, I basically because I don't like leaving the house because I'm a loser. Like, that's pretty much all there is to it. But um, obviously, Christian Grey, one of the things he says in this film is, oh, I don't do dates. He says, like, oh, I don't do the whole dates thing. Um, and eventually, of course, uh, Anastasia, she perseveres and she says, like, oh, but I really want to go on a date. And she kind of, she does everything he wants her to do. And she rewards him by wanting to go on a date with her. He says, like, oh, yeah, actually, I am going to go on a date with you. And he kind of transforms into this, well, he doesn't really, but he kind of transforms on a superficial level into a sort of generic dating situation so obviously it's quite i think i like i make it quite clear that like oh i you know don't really like dating i uh don't like leaving the house i'm a complete loser um things like that and i i thought you know i'd made it clear to this this person i was in a relationship with that's what i was like anyway so fast forward uh, about seven months or whatever and she's like talking to me like why won't you you know why don't we do normal things why don't we go out to eat at restaurants why don't we do blah 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 blah? Uh, why don't we go to the cinema and I'm like hold on a minute I told you like I'm just not into that and like if you if that's not what you want if you want to like go to the cinema and all that stuff and like go out to eat then like that kind of sucks because I prefer to just kind of sit inside and watch films and things like that anyway and it occurs to me like I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's like well what do films like this and what do stories like this say well they say you know oh men aren't really like that when men say that they don't like dating that's just you know them pretending so that you can fix them and stuff like that and I, I kind of just think the the stupidity of Anna, I keep I can't keep wanting to call her Anna instead of just Anastasia. The stupidity yeah, of I've Anastasia. Yeah, I between those two names a lot. Yeah, the stupidity of Anastasia is is a manifestation of basically just oh wait actually people who have flaws have flaws as part of their character. It's not just a uh, setup for you fixing them, and I, I feel like that's kind of like. Yeah. The 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 annoying thing to it, and obviously you know. Um, well, that's that that right there's not really a, a Fifty Shades of Grey staple. That's just romantic. Like yeah, this film exactly. In general. I think uh, I mean obviously there's a lot of that stuff that this film's inherited, but yeah, I mean yeah. it's just the plot. At least the plot of the first one wasn't stupid. It was just boring. <laughs> and then the plot of I guess the the second one is more. So, well, it's not so bad. It's good, because it's still not good. But it is more so bad. It's good. It's so bad. It's better. Yeah. Do we do we want to sum up then? The I, Fifty Shades of Grey. I want to sum up Fifty Shades uh, now. Yes. Okay. Uh, I hated it. It was the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, it was genuinely like I was thinking about this because I was kind of when we were watching this, I was going through. Obviously, we've planned out every film we're going to review. 
Yeah. And I was looking ahead through all the films we're going to review. And I think, generally, we've done quite a good job at not picking films we know are going to be bad. Now, we have picked a few films we know are going to be bad, because, you know, you've got to have a little bit of bad to appreciate the good. But usually yes. we've looked at films that are quite... I mean, the last couple of films we've looked at, I mean, the worst film by our rating so far has been Dunkirk. And Dunkirk was by no means a bad film. No. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's kind of going forward. So I think you look at how all the films we're going to review and how we haven't tended to review kind of, or we're not going to review intentionally that many times terrible films. I mean, we are going to look at the DC universe and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those films are terrible. But I genuinely think that at least for this year and possibly a fair while after that, I don't think there's going to be a worse film than Fifty Shades of Grey. Maybe year. not. Maybe. Well, I'll just say this about Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, obviously, like you say, it's a bad film, but sometimes films are bad that they're good, that, you know, it's funny to watch them, Yeah. like how bad they actually are, and sometimes films are bad and they're boring. Uh, this was neither of those. This was, like, just bad and was... I, I don't know... Confusing? How, confusing, but I was thinking about the word distressing. <laughs> yes. But obviously, I, was, I wasn't distressed watching it, but I don't know, it's just like... It's whatever word is closest to that, that is not... Uh, that's not that. The closest yeah, word that, that isn't it. Yeah, that is not distressing. Yeah. And so that's, that's the thing about this movie. It's like, it's not enjoyable uh, to watch, and it's bad as well. Yes, it's, uh, there's, there's nothing... <laughs> Yeah, it's terrible. I mean, the, yeah, I guess. Look, it's it's fan fiction. I mean, it sh it shouldn't have been taken seriously. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's one woman, Yale James's uh, fantasies about this uh, billionaire bachelor and doing uh, kinky things to her. Um, but yeah, the fact it was so successful um, when it basically it is a story about abuse. I think I think it's an indictment on humanity, Michael. Yes. Uh, have you know? Every day we stray further from God's light. Exactly. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking about, um, obviously because of its abusive nature, uh, this uh, movie or the book had come out uh, when all the Harvey Weinstein stuff and the hashtag Me Too movement happened. Um, what would be the reaction to this movie? Uh, um, well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the thing is, obviously, the the movie is coming out now. I guess. Um, well, yeah, I know, but like now, who who really cares well, about? Well, I like, don't know. Have you heard back of... in back in the day? Well, back in 2015. How long ago was that? Here? Um, it was a sensation. Like Fifty Grades yeah. of Grey, Shades of Grey was this incredible thing. Like the actors were on. I, I saw Graham Norton. They were on, uh, the uh, guy who plays Christian Grey was on Graham Norton. Yeah. Um, but now it feels like no one cares. Kind of way past its sell by. Yeah, it is. They couldn't. Yeah, have... it only came out. Yeah, they it came out three years ago. They hammered it out as think... fast as they could, and it wasn't fast enough. Yeah, and I think that's a combination of um, the uh, fact that they aren't good. Mo uh, the movies aren't good, and also the uh, yeah the, the way women's uh, abuse is looked at now. Uh, obviously, a uh, an older, powerful man taking advantage of a less powerful uh, woman. Uh, it's not. You know, it's not that, so good. Yeah. Um, I think there would be a more of a negative public reaction if it came out today. Yeah. And I think this is why our podcast is kind of good. What is it called? Select and reflect. Yes, because because we're like we can later. reflect on this movie now that it's been out like yeah. three years, and we can say that if it came out today. It, it would not have uh, it would not be as grandly received I guess no yes um, I, I want to talk about just, just on the subject of kind of the Me Too thing are you familiar with I think his name's Aziz Sansari yes uh, he's Aziz recently Sansari. been accused of something uh, basically yeah he, he, he wasn't accused of rape the thing about it is that mm. um, you, you can see in that sort of people we still have a way to go in terms of like dealing with sexual assault because one of the things that basically she said was I didn't enjoy it and he kept going and everyone's basically saying well what's he supposed to be able to do read your mind and it's kind of like I mean obviously I wasn't there 
But this idea that like men have no responsibility to actually, uh, and women of course, because you know women can rape men. Yeah. But you know, people have no responsibility to actually intuit and consider how their partner feels during sex. I think that like, ultimately, of course, it's very easy to say, well, just say, you know, say you don't enjoy it, say you don't like it, and obviously that is true. But then at the same time, it's also like you still have an obligation. Um, and you know, I'm not saying I'm a saint here, but you have an obligation um, to realize when the person you're with isn't enjoying what's happening. Yeah, look, uh, that and Zizan Sari thing. Uh, I don't think it was sexual assault. No, I think it was just him being. I, dick. Yes, I think it is. Well, it's, it's, there, there is a difference between the two. Yes, I would say it's it's an example of something that isn't. I would say it's probably not rape, but rape culture. It is in that it is it's symptomatic of kind of this yeah, idea I don't know of. About that. Well, I don't know. Okay, yeah. I mean, obviously, you're a you're a fake feminist. Uh, you, you hate <laughs> okay. women. No. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. I can see. Yeah. Um, but I. I rape, just, rape culture would be. Uh, her saying no and him still trying. Yeah. And when if you read the article, he, as soon as she said she wasn't enjoying it, he stopped. Yeah, so, I think. Uh, I mean, he he should have seen that she wasn't into it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's I I wouldn't call it sexual sort of rape no, culture. I okay. just think he wasn't being sensitive of the other person's uh, feelings. But yes, I mean, I I do wonder with things like that. I mean, how? I mean, obviously, the thing is we. On the one hand, You're strayed a bit here. Well, I, I think it's, it's it's worth looking at this, but well, the the abuse angle of it is especially because, uh, I mean, on the one hand, we are I think more conscious of uh, rape now, and and this is kind of like obviously like a common thing uh, yeah. in a lot of feminist issues. It's like and a lot of progressive issues in general. Actually, we're more conscious of it, but at the same time, you know, to kind of reach that there are new issues like for example race we're more conscious of racism now but uh then there become new issues like uh positive racism and and cultural appropriation and all that kind of stuff so i think um the the short answer is like people i think there are still going to be people who say like um that you're that we're prudes for criticizing christian gray because you know oh you know um, and I think that's kind of, it's kind of like now we've got the there's a really good book on this actually which I'm just going to plug it's called uh, The Sexual Liberals and the Attack on Feminism and it's basically I think probably the definitive seminary work on this idea of how uh, extremely liberal attitudes towards sex meaning you know abusive sex is, is always fine and things like that can actually hurt women so I'll just say that. Yeah. Um, we, do you have anything to say specifically? Oh, and also, by the way, I know I don't rate things out of ten. I rate things relative to each other. It goes about yeah. saying this is the bottom of the bottom. What do you rate this out of ten, though? Uh, I'm going to give it a two. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah. uh, do we want to talk, or do you have anything to say specifically about Fifty Shades Darker? Um, I guess so. Because I have uh, nothing to say specifically about it. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing I like. Said. I wrote so much down about Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting, you know, some stuff to come out about Fifty Shades of Darker. Do you know? Do you, um, yeah. Do you want to guess? Yeah. The, uh, the budget. I thought we should do this. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna guess. I mean, logically, you'd think the same budget, but maybe it's slightly bigger because maybe I think they they amp it up a bit. So I'm gonna go for fifty. It's fifty-five million. That's so you're bad. on the right way. Yeah. And the box office? I think it would have gone down. So I'm gonna go for it was it was. So I'm gonna go for four hundred. The four hundred and sixty. It's three hundred and eighty. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's still a very healthy profit, but not as much. Yeah. Uh, this film, by the way, was directed by uh, James Foley, not the other person who directed it. Uh, oh. Which was who directed it? But Sam Taylor Johnson. So they changed uh, director. But both times it's been a man who directed it. Uh, yes. Which is I don't know. Like it seems like a stupid kind of decision by the studio because I would think I don't know. I mean, just it, it's clearly supposed to be for women. Um, so yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, I mean, if I you're, it just seems like a dumb thing. Like you're making a film. I mean, obviously, I guess maybe 
women. I don't know how many women actually enjoyed this film, but I would think like. Well, it's for women, but it's not a very feminist. Yeah, I, I would think so, though that this film probably at all. or both films would have done better if they'd been directed by women, because. I mean, obviously, I think they'd be. I don't know. Better. Well, it's based on, based on the source material, and that was by a woman. By, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I was just. I got a few things about Fifty Shades Darker. Fifty Shades Darker. Sorry. I think every guy that Anastasia meets is a creep. She's Including just got magical power. I think it's just because yeah. all men are ah, evil. Maybe. Not got, all. Uh, men. Jose. Yeah. Creep. Or Jose, whatever he is. He. he d- takes the photos of her uh, without her permi- uh, permission you got Christian I mean we really don't need to go into that Yeah. Uh, and then you got his uh, her boss uh, who Jack? is called Jack yeah. yes, oh wow Jack. Got in there. I'm just looking back uh, yeah Eric Johnson is Jack Hyde and his boss at SIP and Stalker oh no that's, that's what he is not the company's name <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah I was just wondering. Obviously, now you've explained to me that there is a uh, that Fifty Shades Darker was only half of, or the film is only half of what the actual sequel is. Jack's role makes more sense because I was thinking like, what the hell is the point in this yeah. guy? So if he tries to um, like sexually uh, assault, or I guess well maybe not. I don't know because he doesn't actually touch her in any way, but he tries to um, touch Anna. Uh, or and yeah, I thought he was meant to be the Jacob character at first, you know, because this is based on Twilight fan fiction. I thought he was meant to be, you know, uh, the guy that uh, Anna likes uh, because you know she's uh, yeah she's a kind of she well obviously Christian at the end of uh, the first movie hurt her and she she is her and so she sees this uh, guy who happens to be her boss uh, who you know. Uh, is more stable, wants a more normal relationship compared to a Christian, and you know that can be the Jacob uh, in this Twilight fanfic. But that wasn't the case, obviously. Uh, he's a uh, creep and uh, tries to, um, yeah, sexually uh, assault her. Sexually assault. Tries her. to hashtag me to her. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with. And I agree with what you're saying about him kind of being set up as like maybe an interesting and viable alternative to Christian. Yeah, exactly. And then I guess he, he turns into a horrible monster just to make Christian seem half-decent by comparison. Yeah, but that would be, I mean, it'd be a complete, like, copy of Twilight. But it'd be a more interesting road to go down. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, I mean, this re- movie doesn't really go down any road. Yes. I mean, yeah. I, I wrote out the Some plot here. I wrote out the plot, um, and I just want to yeah, uh, recap. So they have a. Uh, once they get back together, you know, they have dinner and yeah. they have sex. Yeah. Then they go to a, a ball where a load of fancy dresses. And then uh, they have sex. Then they have sex. <laughs> then they yeah. uh, go out on a boat after Anna's car is trashed. And then they have sex. Then they have sex. <laughs> uh, then I, I wrote job stuff. So I assume that's, yeah. that's uh, her getting her boss by. And they have sex. Uh, and then Leela tries to shoot her. The uh, oh, the, the I, I really want to talk stalker. about Leela trying to shoot okay. her because I, I I was thinking about this and this one thing I didn't mention, which I was just going through my notes to see what I may have not mentioned. Um, he un Christian unnecessarily says, "Get Anastasia out of here, and leave me with this woman." And I think if I was Anastasia, I would be very suspicious because like. It's she is clearly you know, completely dedicated to Christian. She has this, you know, violent rage that inclines her to murder someone apparently, and then Christian just says the word and she puts down her gun and I think she gets to her knees. Yeah. And Christian is a control freak. And Christian doesn't seem to have any morality or regard for anyone. So realistically, if he has this woman there who is completely you know dedicated to him and at his mercy um and she's on her knees he's just going to 
take advantage like in reality he would just bang her basically um and like that's the thing like i don't know in, in my head canon he said anastasia leave and anastasia left like a moron and then he basically is like well uh she's on her knees completely at my mercy and i get off to this so no prizes for guessing what's going to happen here but anyway yeah just and then obviously the thing is she brings up it up later she's like kind of implying she's sort of jealous because she's like i'll never be that dedicated to you and i'll never be like that and it's like well you know you really buggered things up by leaving him with her anyway i'll let you continue now well yeah okay yeah so after that they have sex <laughs> um, he asks her to marry her and then actually they after that they go in a helicopter or he goes in a helicopter ride that crashes oh that's um, so stupid I don't, I, I I don't know that. why but yes. interestingly there's no sex in between those two things happening <gasps> which I think is a missed opportunity <laughs> uh, and then after the helicopter crashes they, they have sex so okay that makes up for it maybe and then yeah. they announce uh, their marriage uh, and uh, obviously um, Anastasia throws some uh, uh, a drink at Christian's former uh, dominant, and then the movie ends. Yeah, so um, I feel like you know Spider-Man Two. Amazing Spider-Man Two. Is yes, Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man Two. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know how it was setting up the Sinister Six. Yes. Um, I feel like this film still did a better job at setting up a. Su- <laughs> it still did a better job at setting up a superhero team than Spider-Man, the Amazing Spider-Man Two, or uh, Batman v Superman. Because I'm rooting for a a superhero, I mean a supervillain team, of the uh, child abusive kind of woman. Uh, yes. Christian's former sub. The and, uh, the Jack. boss, Jack yeah. and Jose. I'm oh, hoping, Jose! Oh. And I'm I'm hoping that there'll be there'll be a Suicide Squad <laughs> spin-off movie. <laughs> Fifty Shades free them all teaming up together. Yeah, that's going to be great. This relationship. Uh, oh, yeah. But yes. Uh, well, I that... just want to say this um, movie, Fifty Shades Darker, I think is better than Fifty Shades. I think Grey. it's better. Even it's... though I think it's stupider. Yeah. But I think it's stupider, which makes it better. And yeah. also, I think their relationship is slightly better in that one. Yeah. Like that, it's a bit more equal and a bit like you actually think that they kind of like each other a bit more. It's easier to watch, uh, I think. Anastasia actually realizes. I wrote this down. Thirty minutes into the movie, she says, "It's this is ownership, not a relationship." And it's like, oh my god, it's taking you like how 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 long to realize this this fact? But she finally realizes that uh, yeah, she's she's not in a uh, normal relationship, I guess, and he's kind of controlling her. So that's good. Uh, and yeah, I think it's. This is actually more of a r- romantic movie. This can be classed, I think, as a rom- romantic movie. Yeah, it's, it's not less about of a horror. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it's obviously the first one. But I, you know, they, I, I'll give this one a pass for being released on Valentine's Day. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, it's it's more boring than the first one. It's less interesting, but it's easier to watch. <laughs> yes, um, I would. Yeah, I mean, just to just to give it, a, I don't really have much to say about it because it's pretty much, it's very similar to what I said about the first one, apart from you know pretty much yeah, it's slightly easier to watch but not really better. Uh, I would give it, I would rate it just above um, the first one. Uh, I imagine you'd probably give it the same rating. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I haven't really thought about it that much. But no, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> it's it's in that part where it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll 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 give it a two because I I yeah, I don't yeah I don't think it's right to give it any more than that. Um, All right. Yeah, I'll give it a two. Yeah, and I would say it was not not good, bad, slightly better than the first one. Um, yeah, you can't really talk much about it because, like you say, it's like just one half of a sequel. Yes. And if the, you know, if they cut down some of the like, the going on a boat, and um, I don't know the helicopter rides, the dinners, maybe you know you could 
make this into one movie, Fifty Shades of Freedom, Fifty Shades Darker, and it could actually, you know, make some sense. Yeah, there's probably um, a a good fan edit in here with a lot of a lot more porn and a lot uh, and a more tight plot. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, I mean, really, it's just bad, and yeah. I really don't want to do Fifty Shades Freed. Um, basically, it's kind of annoying because it's kind of like there's an element of like, well. You have to see how it finishes. You have to see yeah. the climax. <laughs> like, because it's so dumb. Like, I don't. The thing is, like, it's not. It's not even enjoyable. But it's just like, what? What are they gonna do with these? With this kind of nonsense? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't really want to review it, but maybe we'll just. Uh, well, well, that's I the thing. I, will there be any interest? In I don't. Doing I hope not. Yeah, we're doing Fifty Shades of Grey because yeah. Fifty Shades Freed is coming out. But obviously yeah. there isn't a movie after Fifty Shades Freed. That's yeah. it. It's the end of the trilogy. So, well, good, fine, good. Yes, okay. We're not going to watch Fifty Shades Freed. Whew, yeah. That's close. Um, yeah. Unless it gets like 99% Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yes. But I actually read an, in an article that they are um, withholding all reviews or viewings uh, until the day before it's released. So yeah, that doesn't give it much hope for no. a good movie. Okay. Which is actually tomorrow. Yeah. Well, um, I think we're ready to wrap up. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Fifty Shades of I've done that twice now. I did it at the beginning and at the end. Thank you for watching Select and Reflect, the film podcast where we have. Oh, usually I don't do the name drop, do I? No. Uh, so we've just been talking about. Fifty Shades of Grey and Fifty Shades Darker, of course. We have taken a break, uh, a hiatus from our looking at last year's Oscar winners. Next week, we will be returning back to that theme and looking at Manchester by the Sea, which won the Best Screenplay Oscar and Casey Affleck won the Best Actor Oscar. And uh, I've already seen it and... (laughs) It's better than it's shockingly. It's better than Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, so uh, well, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm interested to see what what it's like. Okay, well, um, anyway, I've been Michael Brown. Oh, d- I did it again. That's what I do every time. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, just so, and so yeah. <laughs> uh, you have been Michael. I have been Luke, and thank you for watching. Select and reflect. Bye. Right, let's stop it. So you know what, Michael? Fifty Shades of Grey, I believe, won an Oscar. No. Yeah, it did. It won an Oscar for... Yeah, here we go. Best... Oh, no, sorry. It was nominated for an Oscar. Best Original Song. <gasps> that couldn't... What was it by? Was it The Weeknd? Um, uh, yes. The Weeknd for Earned It. I, I can't believe I knew that. That's crazy. All so right. there you go. Wow. <laughs> I mean, it was from the uh, 2016 Oscars. Wow. Uh, but yeah, there you go. It won a lot of Golden Raspberry Awards. <laughs> Great. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Better, better... Uh, wor- worst actor, worst actress, worst screen combo, worst screenplay, worst picture. It won all of them, so there you go. Do they, sure do they actually the give you the award when you win it? Do you can you collect the award? You, you can. Halle Berry did that uh, when Catwoman. she collected the award. Yeah, for Catwoman. Yeah, she did that. I think that she's the only person who's done that uh, in the history of the Golden Raspberries. Okay, wow. I think. Oh well, so good you can Halle do Berry. It she's got a sense of humour. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I don't know if one of the most memorable moments of your career is accepting an award for worst actor I feel like um, one time Halle Berry was uh, I think she was presenting an award at the Oscars for the pianist Um, well sorry no it was when the pianist was coming out and I think it was best actor in fact it must have been best actor and the winner was Adrian Brody in the pianist and he comes out and the official narrative is that he was so kind of overwhelmed with happiness, he grabs her, like kind of does that thing where you like kind of duck a woman to the ground, like you like 
kind of she falls over and you hold on anyway and he gives her a massive kiss um I'll let, yeah again apparently because he was so happy but yeah i mean technically speaking it was sexual assault but you know whatever it's adrian brody so he basically just comes up and like gives her this massive kiss because he's one but it's like a proper kiss like it's like almost romantic um so i feel like that's a memorable moment so that the two memorable moments are collecting a golden raspberry and um getting kissed by someone uh without warning when they go to collect their oscar yeah maybe you can incorporate this bit into the podcast michael well the gold and raspberry awards and academy awards i don't know yeah well the thing is you know what it's actually annoying because i stopped recording so if my recording on your end is fine we might just have to use that ah uh, yeah okay oh so, yeah. Well, yeah actually i'll stop recording 